Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. This is the first video going over a series of UV editor tools. The UV editor can be found in lots of different ways, but probably the easiest way is to simply go to the UV menu here and we have UV editor. If we open it up here, you see this grid in your scene. You may start out with it kind of zoomed in to the upper right quadrant, but you can zoom out by holding Alt, right click and zoom like so. And we have our tools up here along the top. We have lots of different tools and commands that we're going to be talking about. Mainly the ones that you can find within the tool menu that is within the UV editor. And the first one is the UV lattice tool. I'm going to break this little menu off. I'm going to move it outside of the recording screen. I'll have it here available for me just to easily get to the UV lattice tool uh, menu and such. But you can find it here under the tool menu. UV lattice tool and we'll be talking about the options. You can also find it here in the toolbar of the UV editor. This top left one is the UV lattice tool. So before we can use this tool we actually need something that has UVs that we can then modify with our UV lattice tool. First I want to just use a simple grid of points. So I'm going to go to create polygon primitives and I'm going to just use a plane scale this plane up just so it's easier to see. I'll hide my grid and I'll increase my subdivisions width and height up to say 20 or 30 or so just to get more points. I'm going to move my UV editor though to kind of fill up most of my screen here just because we're going to be focusing within the UV editor for now. I'm going to right click on in the UV editor and choose UV as my component selection type and I can select UVs like so. So the UV lattice tool. If I don't have any UV selected and click UV lattice tool, nothing really happens. If I select UVs after that, however, because it is a tool, the tool is now active, the UV lattice kind of becomes applied to the UVs I select. So if I select different groups of UVs, that lattice becomes available, the lattice points here, which are indicated by these little red circles on the uh, UVs right here. And just in case you're not familiar with the term of what a lattice is, I have a video going over the modeling lattice, which is the lattice deformer. Click this video here if you want to get a look at what a lattice is, like the definition of lattice. And this is a lattice for UVs as opposed to for geometry, which is what this video goes over. So lattice for geometry is like a cage around the mesh that you can pull the, the lattice points to modify the points on the mesh. For the UV lattice tool it's similar. You have a cage, in this case a kind of a two-dimensional cage of points that controls the positioning of lots of points. So you can see by moving this one point in the middle of my red lattice cage I'm kind of, I'm influencing the position of lots of points within this selected area of influence. I can click this corner up here and you can see that any points I do not have selected within this grid of UVs are not affected by the lattice. I can shear them like so and overlap or I can crush them in through here and you can see the points stretch between the UVs that are not influenced and the UVs that are. By using these red circles, you can control a large amount of points without having to individually move and select each one. You have this kind of uh, magnet influence, so to speak, on the points that are applied. And that's the gist of how the UV lattice works, but we like to go into all the details in the Maya tool belt, so we're going to look at some of the options. So under Tool, UV Lattice Tool, we go into the options. We can go to Edit, Reset Settings, make sure I have my default settings. and we have lattice settings and below that we have snap settings and by default our lattice settings have three columns and three rows and this is referring to the points not the kind of quadrants that are created between the points so I have three columns of these red circles and three rows of these little red circles so you can increase and decrease that if I increase this up to five for example hit apply we get more points more cage points to manipulate the UVs that are within the range that we have selected. It can increase the rows as well, like so. 
if you start increasing them too much it might get a little too complex and you kind of lose the point of having the lattice to begin with which is to have a smaller number of points to modify a large number of points if you start having too large number of points in your lattice you kind of defeat the purpose of what the lattice allows you to do edit reset my settings I'll turn it back down to three and three for now let me move this over here some so you can kind of see the window the options window at the same time as the points within the UV editor so with the fall off at one and I move this point here you can see how the UVs that are being influenced by the lattice are staying within this cage they're not protruding out any within this area if I decrease this fall off down to say 0.5 or so and hit apply and now I click and drag say this point here you can see these points are not as sticky the magnetism or the strength of the lattice's pull on these points is been cut in half so to speak so it's not adhering to this points position quite as strictly as it was before it has some fall off I increase it back up to one and hit apply and then click and drag this point and see how it moves a lot further along with the point the magnetism is at its highest so that's the fall off of the UV lattice tool next is use bounding rectangle you'll notice as I select different areas of the plane different area different sections of UVs the UVs I select are kind of bound within this red lattice of our tool I can click all the way out here beyond the plane and just select like for example these four points in the left upper left corner and that lattice will scrunch down and, and only encompass or only include those four points there in the bounding of the rectangle that is created if I uncheck use bounding rectangle hit apply this will happen here where the little red the red cage will kind of fly off the screen but that's okay but what I'm actually going to show though is if I click out here in space with my marquee selection and only include that upper right little box of UVs right through here and then let go you'll see the red cage actually uses that entire area that I selected even though it's beyond the plane way up here as its bounding rectangle so when I click and drag these these influence points of the lattice they're not restricted to only the area that I selected on the plane but also are using the entire area I selected outside the plane as well so you see I have these points out here so just to show you again I'll check use bounding rectangle and hit apply and then I'll click out here in space and drag my marquee selection around an area of UVs and let go you see now the cage is not out here it is within the bounds of the selected points so that's what use bounding rectangle does those are the basic lattice settings for the creation of the lattice with the columns and rows and whether or not you use the bounding rectangle and how much fall off your influence points your lattice points have on the selected UVs next we have snap settings the placement option is snap we have snap corner or snap center so snap corner and snap center for the snap settings only becomes available if you have under image menu pixel snap turned on and pixel snap if you go into its options it has the same setting placement snap corner or snap center so we we'll close that go back to our UV lattice tool options here and go if I open the image menu here you see pixel snap is still turned on so I'm going to edit reset settings here again so you have snap center or snap corner and I'm just going to select a region of UVs and right now we have snap center applied if I click and drag on this UV lattice control point in the center you can see how these points all kind of converge like so they kind of collapse together and it doesn't really matter which point I choose they all just kind of collapse in the same way if I choose snap corner hit apply and click and drag you can kind of see how these points kind of shoot to the corners of the uh, grid so to speak and it doesn't really matter which 
a UV control point I manipulate, and they do kind of get flown all over the place. Now, to be honest, I don't really know a good application for this. <laughs> it could be that I'm missing something. If you have any input on how uh, the snap settings here, if I'm doing something wrong, because I haven't really found a real good use for this, and it seems to react the same way no matter what I do. So it's kind of odd. So the other thing to know about the UV lattice tool is that you don't have to necessarily only select these little circular control points. You can also click and drag on the edges. So I can click and drag on this edge and move it around as well. You're not limited to the points in the corner, like so. But you can move the points or you can move the edges. Like so. So yeah, this is the UV lattice tool. It's definitely uh, very handy for, especially if you have all your UVs kind of laid out where you want them to be, but you just need to just kind of tweak them all a little bit. Maybe uh, grab this, grab the UVs you need and just kind of shift them slightly this way or something along those lines. If you just need to move them a little bit and you have all these points that you have to deal with, you can use a lattice to help you move a large number of points with a small number of points and adjust and fine tune your UV placement in that way. So that's the UV lattice tool. Hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to be going over more UV editor tools in the coming weeks. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, if you have any input on the whole snap corner, snap center thing, I'd appreciate that. I'm kind of confused by that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.